Good morning and Happy New Year to those of you joining us today on January the 3rd, 2020. We are so excited and thankful that you have chosen to worship with us this first Sunday in 2021. We are getting ready to begin this year with singing. We are going to praise God through song, through prayer, and through hearing uh, from the Bible, from God's Word. And uh, we are so excited today that you have chosen to worship with us today. As we, uh, as our custom is, and as we do each Sunday, we want to begin today from reading God's Word. And this is how we like to begin our services here, by directing our thoughts and our attention to the reason we worship, and that is to hear from God and to hear from His Word. So this morning, will you listen, and, uh, and let's prayerfully listen to this passage as we begin uh, this service uh, for the year 2021, this first service, as we read from Romans chapter 12, verses 1 through 5. Hear the Word of the Lord as Paul writes, I appeal to you, therefore, brothers, by the mercies of God, to present your bodies as a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable to God, which is your spiritual worship. Do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewal of your mind, that by testing you may discern what is the will of God, what is good and acceptable and perfect. For by the grace given to me, I say to everyone among you, not to think of himself more highly than he ought to think, but to think with sober judgment, each according to the measure of faith that God has assigned. For as in one body we have many members, and the members do not all have the same function, so we, though many, are one body in Christ and individually members of another. This morning, let's present our bodies as a living sacrifice as we worship together. Will you join me in prayer this morning? Father, we have come to together today by your mercy to present our bodies as a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable to you, for this is our spiritual act of worship. God, I pray as we gather together today, even though we are scattered, God, we have come together by Spirit, Father, seeking to glorify you and magnify your name. So God, I pray that you will fill every home, that you will fill every room, that you will fill every place that this service is being watched today. God, I pray that you will fill the hearts of your people. Father, I pray that by the power of your Spirit, God, that your name will be magnified and glorified today. God, I pray that if there's someone that has joined in today through watching, that they are not a Christian, God, will you open their eyes through this message and through our worship. God, help them see their need of you. In the name and the power and the authority of the name of Christ, we pray. Amen. All right, guys, let's sing and let's magnify our Lord together. It tells us in Romans 6, 23, that uh, for the wages of sin is death, but the free gift of God is eternal life in Christ Jesus our Lord. And that is who we come to worship this morning, and we hope that you will join us as we sing again this morning and lift his name up and give him all the praise. Your loving kindness 
tore through the shadows of my soul. The work is finished, the end is written. Jesus Christ, my living hope. Who could imagine so great a mercy? What heart could fathom such boundless grace? The God of ages step down from glory to wear my sin and bear my shame the cross has spoken i am forgiven the king of kings calls me his own beautiful savior I'm yours forever, Jesus Christ, my living hope. Hallelujah, praise the one who set me free. Hallelujah, death has lost its grip on me. You have broken every chain. There's salvation in your name, Jesus Christ, my living hope. Then came the morning that sealed the promise, your buried body.
God, we just pray that you give us the opportunity to continue to minister to one another, even in the midst of this pandemic. We ask it in Jesus' name. and happy new year once again it is the year 2021 and we are starting a new sermon series as you can see from the book of acts of the apostles or acts of the holy spirit as some people say but this morning i want to begin by asking a question this morning how many of you kept your new year's resolutions throughout the 2020 year. Can you think back all the way back a year ago? Did you keep those resolutions from 2020? What about some of you? Have you even made any resolutions for this new year, for the year 2021? Uh, the definition of resolution, the definition is simply a decision to do something or a decision to not do something. Now, for many people, the beginning of a new year, for them, it is a good time to make a resolution. It's a new year, so let's start off making resolutions is what many people think. So they'll make resolutions uh, to stop eating sweets, or they'll make resolutions to go to the gym, 
Or maybe there's a resolution to, uh, to go to church more, to watch more online services. Or maybe the resolution is to spend more time with family and friends. Or the resolution can be to, to maybe slow down on social media use or video game use. Now look, I could go on and on with the examples of resolutions. But there may be some of you who've made resolutions for this year, but then there may be others of you, maybe you're like me, and you, you don't make the New Year's resolutions because you're like me and you understand by January the 28th or maybe even before, those resolutions are long gone, right? Just give us a week or two and I'll forget about those resolutions. You see, it's easy to become distracted with resolutions because circumstances change, right? You know, for many things that happened in the year 2020, many of those things that happened last year were very unexpected. And there were many businesses, many schools, and other organizations that they had to change their methods. They had to change their way of doing things like cleaning routines changed, deliveries changed, and curbside pickup. You know, all of these things, e-learning, all of these things, they, they had to adapt or change in some way last year. And the same is true for Christians. It was a different year for many of us for, as Christians as well. You know, the things that we held dear seem to be taken away or at least postponed. Christmas parties, uh, you had summer camps with friends at the lake or Sunday school classroom gatherings or more. These things were disrupted in the year 2020. And when these things were, were taken away from us or postponed, if you will, for some things, it felt like something was missing, right? And this feeling that something is missing, that's not a bad thing, okay? It, what it does is it shows us, it shows you that you care for one another, that you want to be with one another, that you want to be here in this building with one another, but it also revealed to us that methods needed to change. Methods needed, ways of doing things needed to adapt to the ever-changing situation in 2020. So online Sunday school classes are happening even on this day. We had virtual worship, and we continue to this day having online live streaming worship and preaching. There's email devotionals that go out. There was a virtual summer camp last year. We had a drive-in vacation Bible school last year. It was hot during that vacation Bible school drive-in. But we also had a drive-in Christmas Eve service, which was the opposite, and it was freezing cold during our drive-in Christmas Eve service. Other programs within our church and events were changed because of the adaption to the current situation. The church now looks different today than it did January the 3rd, 2020. Methods change. Programming, programs change Worship style changes. I mean, look at the stage. The stage looks different. Stage design changes. Locations change. We change over time. But there is one thing that does not change over time, and that is the mission of your life and the mission of the church. Let me ask you today. Why do you exist? Why do you exist? 
Why, why does the First Baptist Church of Carmi exist? Why are we here at 301 Oak Street, Carmi, Illinois? You see, these things, this mission that we have in our life, it doesn't change. Why do we participate in giving to the Lottie Moon Christmas offering each December and the Annie Armstrong Christmas or the Annie Armstrong offering? Why do we sing the songs that we sing on Sunday morning? It's because the mission of those who have been redeemed and the blood bought church of Jesus Christ remains the same because Jesus never changes. Jesus is the same yesterday, today, and forevermore, and our mission does not change. So we need to ask, what then is our mission? Why do we exist? And that's what I want us to begin looking at today. In order for us to see and to, and to know and to understand the mission of our church and the mission of our lives, we need to go back past the year 2010, when for our church, we, we averaged well over 200 in attendance. We need to go pack back past the 1930s for our church when we had over 900 members of our church. We need to go back past April of 1884 when members, when the first members of First Baptist Church started this church that we now hold dear. Let us go back to the very book of the Bible in the New Testament called Acts. So if you have your copy of God's Word this morning, will you turn or swipe with me to this New Testament book? It's Acts chapter 1. This morning I want us to see from this very first chapter, from the first Sunday of 2021, I want us to see that we can live our lives for the kingdom of God in 2021 by being witnesses of Jesus by the power of the Holy Spirit, by persevering in prayerful patience, and by living each day with radical purpose. So, again, if you have your copy of God's Word, Acts chapter 1, and will you honor the reading of God's Word this morning uh, by following along or by listening as we read Acts chapter 1. Verse 1, in the first book, O Theophilus, I have dealt with all that Jesus began to do and teach until the day when he was taken up after he had given commands through the Holy Spirit to the apostles whom he had chosen. He presented himself alive to them after his suffering by many proofs, appearing to them during 40 days and speaking about the kingdom of God. And while staying with them, he ordered them not to depart from Jerusalem, but to wait for the promise of the, Holy, of the Father, which, he said, you heard from me, for John baptized with water, but you will be baptized with the Holy Spirit not many days from now. So when they had come together, they asked him, Lord, will you at this time restore the kingdom to Israel? He said to them, it is not for you to know times or seasons that the Father has fixed by his own authority. But you will receive power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you. And you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem and in all Judea and Samaria and to the end of the earth. And when he had said these things as they were looking on, he was lifted up and a cloud took him out of their sight. And while they were gazing into heaven as he went, behold, two men stood by them in white robes and said, Men of Galilee, why do you stand looking into heaven? This Jesus who was taken up from you into heaven will come in the same way as you saw him go into heaven. Then they returned to Jerusalem from the mount called Olivet, which is near Jerusalem, a Sabbath's day journey away. 
And when they had entered, they went, into, they went up to the upper room where they were staying, Peter and John and James and Andrew, Philip and Thomas, Bartholomew and Matthew, James the son of Alphaeus and Simon the zealot and Judas the son of James. All these with one accord were devoting themselves to prayer together with the women and Mary the mother of Jesus and his brothers. Verse 15. In those days, Peter stood up among the brothers. The company of persons was in all about 120 and said, Brothers, the scripture had to be fulfilled, which the Holy Spirit spoke beforehand by the mouth of David concerning Judas, who became a guide to those who arrested Jesus. For he was numbered among us and was allotted his share in the ministry. Now this man acquired a field with the reward of his wickedness and falling headlong, he burst open in the middle and all his bowels gushed out and it became known to all the inhabitants of Jerusalem so that the field was called in their own language Akadema, that is, field of blood. For it is written in the book of Psalms, may his camp become desolate and let there be no one to dwell in it. And... Let another take his office. So one of the men who had accompanied us during all the time that the Lord Jesus went in and out among us, beginning from the baptism of John until the day when he was taken up from us, one of these men must become with us a witness to his resurrection. And they put forward two, Joseph called Barsabbas, who was also called Justice and Matthias. And they prayed and said, You, Lord, who know the hearts of all, show which one of these two you have chosen to take the place in this ministry and apostleship from which Judas turned aside to go to his own place. And they cast lots for them. And the lot fell on Matthias. And he was numbered with the eleven apostles. This is the word of the Lord. Will you join me at this time in prayer? Heavenly Father, we are beginning on a journey through the book of the Acts of the Apostles. God, from this very beginning chapter, God, I pray that you will open our eyes. God, help us to see the purpose to which you have called us. And God, I pray that you will help us from this day, this first Sunday of the new year, God, help us to live this year with the purpose that you have given us so that you may receive the glory and that you are honored and edified. If there's someone today that's watching that they do not know you, God, open their eyes and help them to see their need of you. And it's in the name of Jesus we pray. Amen. All right, let's start off at the very beginning this morning. Here at the very beginning, in verse 1, we see to whom this letter was written to. Now, the author of the book of Acts is Luke. And Luke is writing to a man by the name of Theophilus. Now, Luke also wrote the Gospel of Luke. That's kind of volume 1. And then you've got Acts that Luke wrote. That's, you know, kind of volume 2. So Luke wrote these two books for Theophilus, but he also wrote them for us today as well. And here in the first few verses of chapter 1, Luke sums up his previous work, the gospel of Luke. And here in these first few verses, he tells us, I've dealt with all that Jesus began to do and teach, he wrote, until the day when he was taken up, after he had given commands through the Holy Spirit to the apostles whom he had chosen. Then Luke, the author, continues to write this letter by telling us what happened after the resurrection of Jesus. And then the book of Acts describes the beginning of the church in different missionary journeys. Now, in our passage that we read today, he begins by telling us that there were 40 days that Jesus presented himself alive to the disciples and others who were with them. And I want you to hear what Luke wrote as he tells us what he told and taught the disciples. This is kind of an intense teaching, kind of an, a, a crash course, if you will, with his disciples. Look again at verse 3 with me, if you will. Jesus was speaking about the kingdom 
of God. Now, if it were important for the resurrected Christ to spend his final 40 days on this earth talking about the kingdom of God, then the kingdom of God must be vital for your Christian life and for the mission of the church. So first, let's make sure that we understand what we're talking about when we talk about the kingdom of God. What is the kingdom of God? Let's put it out simply. Simply put, the kingdom of God is the rule or the dominion of God in our lives. So let's say it again. The kingdom of God is simply the rule or the dominion of God in our lives. Now, when a king sets up a kingdom, the, the king has dominion and rule over the lives and also over the territory as well. So the subjects of the kingdom don't get to pick and choose what parts of their life that the king can have dominion over. Okay? So the subjects of the kingdom, they can't say, I'll say he's my king. I'll say he's my ruler, but he doesn't really rule my entire life. I just want the benefits of living in the kingdom. That's not how it works in a kingdom. He's either your king or you're living in rebellion inside the kingdom. So let me ask you today, is God the king of your life? Now, I'm not asking, is God the king only when you're in this building? When the doors are open and when we're able to gather, I'm not asking if he's your king only when you're in this building. Does he have dominion and rule over your life when you are grocery shopping at Walmart or Little Giant? Is he the ruler? Is he the king of your life when you are at your home Worshiping and joining us through our live stream worship? Is he the king and ruler of your life when you are out in the field on the tractor or when you are in the factory at work? Is he the ruler, the king? Is, does he have dominion over your life when you are alone in your car and you're behind someone who's actually driving the speed limit? If not, then how can we live? For the kingdom of God. How can we live our lives for the kingdom? So that's what I want us to look at today. I want us to see through Acts chapter 1. Three ways that we can live our lives for the kingdom of God. This year in 2020 and beyond. And as we continue looking at the book of Acts from Acts chapter 2 and on. We're going to see what happens when we live our lives in submission to the king. So firstly, what I want us to look at today is we can live our lives for the kingdom of God in 2021 by being witnesses of Jesus by the power of the Holy Spirit. Will you reread with me verses 6 through 11? So verses 6 through 11, this is how we get the sermon point. Luke writes, so when they had come together, they asked Jesus, Lord, Will you at this time restore the kingdom to Israel? He said to them, It is not for you to know times or seasons that the Father has fixed by his own authority. But you will receive power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you. And you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem and in all Judea and Samaria and to the end of the earth. And when he had said these things as they were looking on... He was lifted up, and a cloud took him out of their sight. And while they were gazing into heaven as he went, behold, two men stood them in white robes and said, Men of Galilee, why do you stand looking into heaven? This Jesus who was taken up from you into heaven will come in the same way as you saw him go into heaven. So here, what we see, starting at verse 6, is that the disciples were concerned about an earthly kingdom. The very last question 
that they asked the resurrected Christ. The very last question was, will you at this time restore the kingdom to Israel? They're concerned still about an earthly kingdom. And Jesus answered them by reminding them that only the Father knows that he has put these in place by his own authority or by his rule, by his dominion. And then before this cloud picked up Jesus and, and took him out of their sight, I want you to hear the last words of Jesus. He said, but you will receive power. You will receive power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you and you will be my witnesses. For those of you who joined us in October and November, if you remember their Romans chapter 8 series. We started looking at Romans chapter 8 on October the 11th, and we ended Romans chapter 8 on November the 22nd. But we learned through that passage and that chapter about the power of the Holy Spirit. And here Jesus tells the disciples, those that were with them, you will receive power from the Holy Spirit. Now the word power that Jesus used here. He used it in the Greek language. That word power is the same English word we use today for dynamite. Now, they didn't have dynamite at this time period, but the word expresses the power that the Holy Spirit will bring to those who have been born again, to those who have received that second birth. You see, living for the kingdom of God in 2021 does not depend on who is in office in 2021, but it requires the power of the Holy Spirit in our lives. Living for the kingdom of God in 2021 does not depend on meeting in a building or meeting in our homes, but living for the kingdom of God demands the rule of God in our lives by the power of the Holy Spirit. Living for the kingdom of God in 2021 does not demand checking off a box for a daily Bible reading plan, but it calls for each born again, each child of God to surrender to the power and the authority of the Holy Spirit in our lives. And when we surrender, when we surrender to the authority and the power of the Holy Spirit in our lives, do you know what will happen? Jesus told us, he said, you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem and in Judea and Samaria and to the end of the earth. Now, can I put that, uh, make it a little bit more personal? Because I'm sure some of us have never been to Jerusalem or Judea or Samaria. I don't know, some of you may have not been out of White County in a while. So let's put this, let's make it a little more applicable, Okay. When we surrender to the power and to the authority of the Holy Spirit in our lives, we will be witnesses in Carmi, in the state of Illinois, throughout the United States and to the end of the earth. Here we see the promise of the power of the Holy Spirit isn't limited to a select group of people, but the power of the Holy Spirit in our lives can change the world for the kingdom of God. Now, why did they need power? Why did they need power? And why did the world need to be changed for the kingdom of God? You see, they needed to be witnesses of the resurrected Christ. They needed to be witnesses to the, wit to the, they needed power to be witnesses of the resurrected Christ. They were going to Jerusalem, they were going to Judea, Samaria, and they were going into a world that was under the dominion of darkness. You see, those who have not surrendered to the rule of God in their lives, they are living under the rule in the kingdom of darkness. They're not living their lives for the glory of the king, but instead they are living under the control of the prince of darkness. Sin has darkened their eyes to the destruction that awaits them. 
Now, maybe you know someone like that. Maybe you know someone who's living under the kingdom of this world, under the rule of the prince of darkness. Maybe it's a friend. Maybe it's a family member. Maybe it is a neighbor that lives in your community. Did you know that there's an estimated 5.4 billion people in this world who are living under the dominion of darkness? And we have been called to be witnesses of a resurrected Christ that is ruled by darkness. And the power of spiritual darkness can only be overcome by the glorious light of the gospel. Jesus himself said in John chapter 8 verse 12, He is the light of the world. Whoever follows him will not walk in darkness, but will have the light of light. You see, Jesus entered into this darkness as a babe in swaddling clothes, but he ascended on high as a victorious, resurrected redeemer. And our mission, our purpose is to take the light of the gospel into a dark world. Now, this command by Jesus sounds urgent right? And I'm sure for someone who's reading this for the first time, they may think that the disciples should begin once Jesus has ascended into the heavens by creating a new ministry to feed the hungry, right? Jesus ascends up into the heavens. The disciples should break off into small groups with discussion questions and talk about what Jesus has just commanded them. Or maybe the disciples should break off and start the first Baptist church of Jerusalem. But what we read about, what we read here in verses 12 through 14, is the disciples didn't begin a new ministry. They didn't begin a new outreach program. But they were prayerfully patient. They were prayerfully patient. That's what I want us to see secondly today. We can live our lives for the kingdom of God in 2021 by persevering in prayerful patience. Will you reread verses 4 and 5, and then we're going to skip through and look at verses 12 through 14. I know it's kind of scattered, but uh, it does join together. Trust me, okay? Let's read through this, starting at verse 4. And while they were staying... With them, Jesus ordered them not to depart from Jerusalem, but to wait for the promise of the Father, which he said, you heard from me. For John baptized with water, but you will be baptized with the Holy Spirit not many days from now. Now it's like a verse 12. Then they returned to Jerusalem from the mount called Olivet, which is near Jerusalem, a Sabbath day journey away. And when they had entered, they went up to the upper room where they were staying, Peter and John and James and Andrew, Philip and Thomas, Bartholomew and Matthew, James the son of Alphaeus, and Simon the zealot, and Judas the son of James. All these with one accord were devoting themselves to prayer together with the women and Mary the mother of Jesus and his brothers. Now, before Jesus ascended into the sky, he gave them a promise. The Holy Spirit will come. But Jesus ordered them to wait. You see, Jesus knew that the crowds were gathering into Jerusalem and people from all over the ancient world would be gathering there for Pentecost. Jesus knew that those who were gathering would be living under the dominion of darkness and Jesus orders them to, to wait. You know, could they not have set up a booth, at least a booth there in Jerusalem and passed out waters, you know, bottled water? Could they not have worn robes with John 3.16 written on them? Well, I know John 3.16 wasn't written then. But, you know, they could have written down some words that Jesus had said on their robes. You know, could they not have went back home and waited on Peter and John to start a new class on creating a budget for your family in a Roman world and go out and invite people to come to this class? They persevered. Once Jesus ascended into the heaven, 
by being patient in prayer. In verse 14, it even says they devoted themselves to prayer. Do you know what the word devoted means? The word devoted in the Greek means to continue in, or I like this definition, it means to be glued to. Here, the disciples and those that were with them, they were glued to prayer. They didn't waste their time by waiting, but they redeemed their time by praying. You see, waiting in a culture that looks for instant results, that's challenging. We see the needs around us, right? We see the drug use. We see and we know about the depression. We know about the family division. We know about the divorce. And then you add on top of that a global pandemic where there's so much political division. There's so many opinions about masks or no masks. You have all of this and more. And then you add on top of that your own needs in your own life. And then you add on top of that layer your pastor that stands up on the first Sunday of the new year and says there's 5.4 billion people who are living in darkness. Shouldn't we enter this new year by helping more people go overseas on mission trips? What about door-to-door -door evangelism? How about classes, both virtual and in-person, to meet the needs of children, of students, of college age and young adults and middle age adults and senior age adults? How about prison ministry? What about a food pantry? How about more social media shares to spread the gospel? Look, I'm not challenging us this year in 2021 to start new programs or events at this time, but I'm calling our church to persevere in challenging times in prayerful patience. I understand. I need you to hear me on this. I understand not gathering together in this building on Sunday mornings is difficult. I understand that. I understand you want to be here on Sunday mornings. And please understand, I can't wait to see you back here on Sunday mornings, in the pews, in the balcony. I can't wait to see you here. I understand it feels like the way that we used to do church was stripped away from us. And the things that we used to do, they're not the way that it used to be. Do you think it was easy for the disciples here in Acts chapter 1? We read in John chapter 13 and 14 that the disciples were fearful of Jesus leaving them. And now in chapter 1, Jesus left them on a cloud and he ordered them to wait. Things aren't the way they used to be for the disciples here. It's not the good old days for them anymore. But Jesus knew better days were coming. And he told them in John 16, 7, It is to your advantage that I go away. For if I do not go away, the Helper or the Holy Spirit will not come. So Jesus orders the disciples, go back, wait for the promise of the Holy Spirit. And that's what they do. They go back and they wait not twiddling their thumbs or not sitting back and reflecting on the good old days when they were with Jesus, but they persevere in challenging times by waiting patiently in prayer. Can I tell you, I've been so encouraged by so many of you during these challenging months over the past year about the creativity in the ways that you have been caring for one another. Can I say also that uh, church family, we've been blessed with an amazing church staff that, that is seeking to, to find ways, creative ways to, to minister to you, to our church family, and to our community. But most recently, I've been blessed with our deacons. You see, our chairman of deacons came up one day a few weeks ago and printed off all of the names of our Sunday school classes and the roster in each Sunday school 
uh, class. And all of these names are placed in each Sunday school class around the church. And they even try to think of names of people maybe who aren't enlisted in a Sunday school class. And one by one throughout the week and throughout the day, just separately, they'll come in individually and they'll go into the room and they'll pray for you. They'll lift your name up in prayer. And they've been doing that for a couple of weeks now. And can I tell you, our deacons, they want to be in this building. They want to be in here worshiping along with you. But they have been persevering in challenging times in prayerful patience. This morning, this first Sunday of 2020, I want to ask you, will you begin 2021 by persevering in prayerful patience? Look, our church council, we're going to be meeting this week. This week, If you're on the church council, if you haven't received the email from us this week, I want you to know we're meeting this week. And the church council's meeting to discuss when we will have in-person gatherings again. I don't want you to wait. I don't want you to wait until the decision is made for Sunday morning services to begin with in-person gatherings for you to begin living for the kingdom of God. You can begin right now. You can begin today living by the authority and the power of the Holy Spirit. And you can begin 2021 by living in prayerful patience. So this morning, I want to invite you After this service is over, I don't want you to go right now, okay? Because we still have some amazing stuff to go through in Acts chapter 1. But after this service is over, if you go to our church website at firstbaptistcarmi.com, on the very first page, you're going to see this button, this little link that says 40-day prayer guide. And in this prayer guide, I'm asking you to join me to start this new year in prayer. You see here in Acts chapter 1, the disciples and those that were with them, they glued themselves to prayer. Let me ask you, what are you going to glue yourself to this year? Are you going to glue yourself to a new exercise program? Are you going to glue yourself to the resolution that you won't eat any more sweets this year? Or at least, you know, until your birthday when you get this delicious cake, right? Are you going to glue yourself to living on a budget or to going to church when the doors are open or watching more of our live stream? Look, these aren't bad things to glue yourself to. But today I'm asking us as a church family to glue ourselves, to devote ourselves to prayer. Guys, When we glue ourselves to prayer in 2021 and when we wait for the power of the Holy Spirit in our lives to lead this church, to lead us in our Christian walk, the Holy Spirit will guide us, the Holy Spirit will lead us, and God will be glorified and will use us in a mighty way. Now, that's what Acts chapter 2 and following talks about. Okay, we're going to see that in the weeks, months, or I don't know, maybe years ahead as we go through Acts. But as they waited on the Holy Spirit, and as the Holy Spirit arrived, God used these individuals in radical ways. And that's what I want us to see today in this final truth that we see here in Acts chapter 1. We can live our lives for the kingdom of God in 2021 by living each day with radical purpose. You see in verses 15 through 26, we see here that the disciples, they made the decision to replace Judas. Judas was the disciple that betrayed Jesus. And we read about his death here that's described uh, by Luke here in verses 15 through 20. But in verse 21 Peter declares, there are men who are with them and they must decide who will take the place of Judas. And they eventually decide on a man by the name of Matthias. Now, the decision to replace Judas wasn't made because that was their tradition. 
okay? That decision wasn't made because they need to have 12 disciples because that's the way they've always done things. You see, sadly, there are many churches throughout America that make decisions because that's the way they've always done things. And maybe that's true for you in your Christian walk. Maybe there are decisions that you make every single day because that's the way you've always done things. Today, I'm not challenging you to enter 2021 with another routine to add to your already busy schedule. I'm not asking you to pick up an old habit of modern Christianity. Today, I'm challenging you to live 2021 with radical purpose. Now, what am I talking about when I say the word radical? I'm not trying to be some surfer dude up here on the stage with bleached blonde hair saying, you know, this is totally radical, man, okay? No, the word radical in the dictionary means to affect the fundamental nature of something. The word radical means to affect the fundamental nature of something. What was the radical purpose here in Acts chapter 1? I want you to see this. In verse 22, Peter tells us, One of these men must become with us a witness to his resurrection. You see, the resurrection of Jesus was the radical moment in history. That resurrection changed the course of history. And we will see in Acts that the resurrection changed the lives of many people throughout this amazing book. But the radical purpose of the disciples of Jesus from Acts chapter 1 until today, January the 3rd, 2021, remains the same. To be witnesses of the resurrection of Jesus. They had a radical purpose. And that radical purpose defined them. Their radical purpose caused them to make decisions differently. So let me ask you today, what is your purpose defining who you are? Is your purpose defining who you are? In this chapter, Acts chapter 1, we see that the purpose of the disciples is the same for you as well. If you have been born again, you are a disciple of Jesus and your radical purpose is to be witnesses of the resurrected Christ. So then, does this radical purpose change the way you make decisions for your life every single day? Disciples at home with kids, are you a witness to the resurrected Christ with your own children? Disciples at home who have grandchildren, are you a witness to the resurrected Christ to your grandchildren? You can spoil them. I'm not saying you can't spoil the grandkids. But are you a witness to the resurrected Christ? Disciples of you who are in school, are you a witness to the resurrected Christ to those who are under the dominion and the rule of darkness? Disciples who have neighbors, disciples who have friends, disciples who have family members who are under the rule of darkness. Are you a witness of the resurrected Christ? If not, if you have never been a witness to the resurrected Christ, let me encourage you to begin today living 2021 with radical purpose. Break away from the mindset that this is the way I've always done it. Break away from the mindset within this church. This is the way we've always done things. As we just saw in 2020, situations change, methods change, but the radical purpose remains the same. Disciples are called to be witnesses of the resurrected Christ. So let me encourage you today. Begin living 2021 with radical purpose purpose and start today with prayer. Start today with prayer. You see, living with radical purpose, that takes courage. Living with radical purpose, that takes boldness. 
And we will see in the book of Acts that living with radical purpose even led to the death of some of these people here in Acts chapter 1. Are you willing to go that far? Are you willing to go all the way with this radical purpose? You see, I believe right now that the Holy Spirit is calling some of you today to live with radical purpose in your home. The Holy Spirit is calling some of you today to live with radical purpose in your school, at your work, or even to live with radical purpose on the mission field. And for some of you, the Holy Spirit is inviting you. The Holy Spirit is calling some of you right now, begin with prayer and begin today by surrendering to the authority of the Holy Spirit in your life. Let me ask you, how are you going to respond to the call, to the invitation of the Holy Spirit? For those of you watching today, maybe you have never placed your faith in the work of Jesus. Your trust is not in the work of Jesus, but you've been trusting in, in other things of this world. Maybe you're even trying to make your own path to God. Let me say today that you are living under the rule and the dominion of darkness, and your eyes have been blinded to the light of good news. Today, I want to share good news with you. There is hope. John 3, 16, for God so loved the world that he gave his one and only son, that whoever will believe in him will not perish but have eternal life. You don't have to remain in darkness any longer. Today, I want to encourage you to admit your sins to God. Pray, talk to God right where you're at. Admit to God that you're a sinner. Admit it to him. Your eyes have been blinded, but today I believe the Spirit is calling and inviting you to admit your sins to God. To, through prayer, tell God that you believe that Jesus died on the cross, that he came back to life again. And through prayer, you can confess that he is now your Savior and Lord, and you can live under the kingdom and the dominion and the rule of our great and majestic God. And you can walk in the light is Jesus' life. Today, if you want to do that, let me encourage you. Don't wait until these doors are open in this building. Today, I want to encourage you to do that right now. Will you bow your heads with me at your home, wherever you're watching this, and let's pray. Father, I believe today that your word has gone forth. God, I pray that your spirit with power will convict that your spirit with power will lead, that your spirit with power will guide, that your spirit with power will break the chains and the stronghold of darkness for those who are living under the dominion of darkness. God, break down these strongholds, God. God, and I pray today that today, for those who are not Christians, will be the day of salvation in their life. For those who are Christians, but they've been living their life the way they want to live. God, I pray today that you will help them see that you have called them to live with radical purpose. God, I pray today that you will help them see that the power of the Holy Spirit lives within them. God, give them courage. Give them boldness to surrender to the authority of the Holy Spirit in their lives and help them to begin today with prayer. And in the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. Okay, we're going to sing a song of invitation. The song fits perfectly with the message. If you've never heard it before, I want you to listen to the words. If you know it, sing along with us because the call is going out. Today, I want, you, I want you to think through how should you respond to this message. If you need prayer, send us a message through Facebook. Call us this week. We'd love to pray with you. And if you're not a Christian, and today you placed your faith in Jesus. Send us a message. We would love to pray with you and tell you what steps, steps to do next. So at this time, let's worship together through song. And I want you to pray and ask God how you should respond. Let us sing.
Fantastic, and thank you again for worshiping with us. I love that song. I hope it's our theme song as we go through the book of Acts. Uh, I'm excited about going through this journey with you today. Look, I've preached a long time today, so let's go ahead. Let's do some announcements. I think we have an announcement video, uh, so at this time, let's ask our uh, audiovisual guys, as they will, to let's uh, watch this video real quick. Well, good morning, everyone. This is your youth pastor, Andy Hannaford, and this is your FBC weekly update. Whether it's your first time here with us at First Baptist Church, or if you've worshiped with us hundreds of times before, we are so thankful that you are here. Be sure that you are following our social media pages and subscribe to our weekly email to stay up to date on all the latest announcements. We're so glad that you joined us this morning. Have a blessed week. We'll see you next time. Hey, not much to announce. I just wanted you to see Pastor Andy's face, all right? <laughs> he did a great job preaching last week. If you did not get to uh, be a part of that service last week, you can scroll through our Facebook page and you can catch up on the sermon from last week. You got to watch it. Andy did such a great job. We're blessed to have him and Vanessa here at our church and Pat. Uh, so we are so thankful for the staff that God has led here at our church. Uh, so I do want to mention church council meeting. If you are a part of the church council, we're meeting tomorrow night here in the sanctuary at 630. Uh, so guys, be praying for that. If you're not on the church council, be praying for the council as we look uh, forward through the days ahead for our church family, okay? Hey, let me read a scripture passage for us as we leave uh, and as you, uh, I guess, log off of Facebook, I guess. Let's read a passage for us. Uh, to bless us as we go on our way this week. This comes from the book of Matthew, chapter 5, verses 13 through 16. Here are the words of our Lord Jesus. You are the salt of the earth, but if salt has lost its taste, how shall its saltness be restored? It is no longer good for anything except to be thrown out and trampled under people's feet. You are the light of the world. A city set on a hill cannot be hidden, nor do people light a lamp and put it under a basket, but on a stand. And it gives light to all in the house. In the same way, let your light shine before others so that they may see your good works and give glory to your Father who is in heaven. Blessings upon you as you go this week and are the light of the world. God bless you.